G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife again. And uh, today we want to have a bit of a, a chat about one of my favourite lizards in the world, and that's the shingleback lizard. So uh, stick around and uh, Pinecone and here will have a bit of a chat about shingleback lizards and just what makes them so cool and unique. So this here is Pinecone. And Pinecone is probably my favourite lizard here at Wicked Wildlife and for a couple of different reasons. Uh, depending on what part of Australia you're from, you'd call Pinecone a shingleback lizard, a sleepy lizard, a headbutt lizard, a horseshoe lizard, a bog eye, a pinecone lizard, all sorts of different things. These guys are found over such a large section of the country that each region sort of gave them their own name and uh, as a result they've got more common names than probably any other Australian animal. The reasons I like this guy though, and there is a few, is they've got a couple of uh, fairly unique adaptations. The shingleback lizard is a member of the blue tongue lizard family. So they're related to the blue tongue lizards like in some of our other videos, I'll pop a link up to them. But uh, they've got a few key differences. The first one is of course these big platy scales. Of course that's where the name comes from, shingleback or pine cone lizard. These are real shingles or pine cone sort of uh, bumps on his back which works really good for protecting him from predators. The other really obvious feature is of course his tail. I can't think of another animal on earth that its head looks just like its bum. Now, it does a couple of things. The first thing is if an animal like a dingo or a bird confronts pinecone here in the bush, there's a 50-50 chance, as far as pinecone's concerned, that he's going to grab the wrong end. Now, while these guys are essentially herbivorous, they do have very strong jaws. So if that animal bites him on the tail, he's of course going to get a chance to swing around, bite that animal back. Now, of course, that's going to be somewhere like the nose, and hopefully that animal wants to let him go and, and pinecone gets to crawl off and live another day. The other thing that this big fat tail of his does is it sort of works like a camel's hump. You see, these guys, they, they live along the inland sort of areas in southern Australia, up the Great Dividing Range, anywhere it's nice and dry, and often these areas don't have a huge amount of resources. So rather than have to depend on finding food every day, uh, when food is in abundance, he'll eat and eat, and his tail will get bigger and bigger. Just like a camel's hump, it stores fat. It means during the lean times, he can use that fat to get through until our food's back in abundance. So he really is just like all Australian wildlife, a true survivor. The other cool things about these guys is they've got a couple of records. We believe that shingleback lizards are probably one of the only monogamous reptiles on earth. No, isn't that sweet? We believe that they've got one partner, and the theory is and that the same pair find each other year in, year out, and repeat the cycle. Now, I don't know many human beings as devoted as a, a lizard that's 30 centimetres long and looks like a pine cone going under a steamroller. So I think for an animal with a brain half the size of a green pea, we can't help but think that's kind of cute. The other really cool record of these guys is these are a strong contender for having the biggest babies for their size of any animal on earth. Whereas the rest of the blue tongue family have four, five, some of them even 30 offspring at a time. Their goal is to produce as many babies as they can so they've got the maximum chances of a couple surviving. Shinglebacks go the other way. They generally have twins, but these twins can make up, each one of them, 30% of the mum's body weight. It's kind of the equivalent of a human woman giving birth to two three-year-olds every year for her entire reproductive life. It's no mean feat. So, I think that there's all sorts of kind of unique adaptations that make these guys absolutely wonderful and I can't help but love them. Unfortunately though, they're not the quickest lizards about and uh, a lot of people like them, make, they make really good pets. So people run them over with cars by accident or on purpose even sometimes. And uh, unfortunately other people collect them from the bush. Now you can imagine if he's got a, a missus or a mister out in the, the wild there, they're going to be sort of missing him. So there's a couple of things that I really want people to take home about these guys. And the first one is if you do want an animal like a shingleback, and they do make wonderful pets, make sure it's captive born. Don't take anything from the wild. The reason we believe wildlife can sometimes make good pets is we want to promote animals in the wild. We don't want to take them away from the wild. The other one is please be careful when you're driving, guys. Not that anybody should, should want to hit any animal of, of any sort, but why would anybody want to run over something as cool as, as Pinecone here, he's absolutely amazing and we love him to bits. So please guys, keep an eye out for reptiles on the road and uh, like always, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already, there's all sorts of other videos coming out. Uh, details about our shows and things like that on our Facebook page or at wickedwildlife.com. 
other than that guys have a good one and take care